My life flows on in endless song above Earth's lamentation. I hear the real though far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love. Welcome to Children's Liturgy of the Word for Sunday, June 27th. This is the 13th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel, we'll hear about some miracles that Jesus performed, and we'll think about what it means to have faith in Jesus and how that affects how we live our lives today. Let's get started. We begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, as we hear of your loving kindness toward others, may we be inspired to bring your healing to anyone in need. Amen. Let's now listen to today's first reading. This is a reading from the Book of Wisdom. God did not make debt, and God never wanted people to die. All living things are good, and there is no evil in them. All people were created in God's image so that they would live forever. But the devil was jealous and brought evil and death into the world. People who choose to follow the ways of the devil choose death instead of the life with God. This is the word of God. Our responsorial psalm is, I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Let's say that together. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Your faithful people, Lord, will praise you with songs and honor your holy name. At night we may cry, but when morning comes, we will celebrate. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Have pity, Lord, help. You have turned my sorrow into joyful dancing. I will never stop singing your praises, my Lord and my God. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Alleluia, alleluia. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, suffered death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. This is a reading from the Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One day, a man named Jairus came to see Jesus. He was one of the rulers of the synagogue. He knelt in front of Jesus and begged him to help him. He told Jesus, my little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so she will get well and live. So Jesus went with Jairus, and a large crowd of people followed them. While they were on their way, some people from Jairus' house came and said, your little girl is dead. There is no need to bother this teacher now. But Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith and believe. Then Jesus took Peter James and John with him to Jairus' house. When they got there, many people were inside crying loudly. Jesus went in and said to them, why are you crying and making all this noise? The child is not dead, she is asleep. When he said this, the people began to laugh and make fun of him. Jesus told them all to go outside. Then he took the little girl's mother and father and the three disciples and went into the room where the little girl was in bed. Jesus took her hand and said, Talitha kum, which means little girl, I say to you, get up. The little girl who was 12 years old 
got up immediately and began to walk around. Her family was amazed and filled with wonder. Jesus told them not to tell anyone what had happened. Then he told them to give the little girl something to eat. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So that's a really powerful story. And I'm happy to be here to uh, talk to you about how I felt when I first uh, read it, and you know some things to kind of think about and to consider after reading this gospel. So it's good to be back with you again. My name is Tom Husar, and this one uh, really touched me personally because I have a daughter and she's 11 years old, and I have a son who's 14 years old. So you know the story is about somebody right around their age. And after I read it for I don't know like the third time. There were, there were a couple words, three words, in fact, uh, that really jumped out to me as I kept reading through this story. And the words that kept popping into my head were hope, faith, and another chance. Hope, faith, and another chance. <clears throat> First, I want to talk a little bit about hope. As I read this story and I, and I thought about my, my words here, hope, faith, and another chance, I couldn't help but think about what we've been going through, all of us together, over the course of the past you know, year and a, and a half almost now. I remember, and I, I work um, at a school, I work with middle school students, and I remember last March when our school district, the school district I work in, and yours too, made the decision that we were going to pull all the students out of school, and we were going to take this, this shot at remote learning. We hoped that it was going to work, but nobody knew for sure. It had never been done before, but we really, really hoped that somehow as educators, we would be able to create an experience for students where they would still have the opportunity to learn while being safe. I remember hoping initially that this was only gonna be a two, maybe a three week interruption. I remember standing outside in March of last year and handing out uh, uh, laptops to students and to their family members and saying, I hope to see you in a couple of weeks. I hope that you're returning this in just two or three weeks because we're back at school. That was the hope. And, and, and I wanted to believe it and I wanted it to be true. I didn't know, but I had that hope. Well, after two or three weeks, and we were still in remote learning, my hope shifted. My hope was no longer about just hoping that, you know, we could do uh, something to provide a good educational experience. It was hoping that people would be safe, hoping that somebody somewhere, some doctor or scientist was gonna find a cure, a vaccine, something that could bring us back as a, as a whole society, instead of being just separated uh, all often in our homes and learning in our in our you know in our bedrooms or at our kitchen tables or in a basement wherever maybe you know you were trying to learn school over the course of the past year and a half. I hoped that there would be the time that we finally got to just recently where we would all be able to come back together as a community at church to be able to go to church and to see people there and interact with people as opposed to watching Monsignor on a screen or to get back into finally a classroom, whether you're in kindergarten or you're you know, a senior in, in high school, right? That experience of being in the building and interacting with not only your teachers, but with kids your age, that's so important to have that hope and to hold on to that hope for so long. You know, think about how long you, know, you, were, you were out of church. Think of how long that you were out of school, out of your classrooms, right? It's, it's uh, incredible. My daughter goes to uh, LMS, lower um, middle school. And, you know, it's funny, she's leaving for upper middle school next year in September. Uh, and I think that she was at LMS for, you know, whatever, like six months. That's it. That, that was her whole LMS uh, experience. It really is uh, incredible. But I know that as an educator and as a parent, I never lost hope. And, I, and I, I hope, right, that that's one of the lessons that you get out of 
not just today's gospel, that, that this parent, Jairus, right, never lost hope that something can happen that could save his daughter, that you don't lose hope because church was taken from you. Your friends were taken from you in terms of seeing them every single day and school was taken from you. And, and if you, you know, play rec baseball or basketball or do some activity, you dance and you weren't able to do that over the course of the past, you know, almost year and a half that you still had that hope that at some point, you know, you would be able to get back to those activities. And so as an educator, it's so exciting now to see kids back in the building. It's so exciting uh, to drive past the field, to walk through Montgomery Park and to see baseball games uh, going on and kids playing on the basketball court. Like, that's great. So it's so important. Whatever things are happening in your life, it's not always going to be a big like pandemic that we had with COVID. It could be something that's just impacting you or your family or maybe uh, you and a couple of friends. You never lose hope that things can get better. And that leads me to my second word, faith, faith from the gospel today. But Jesus said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith and believe. So that word faith, right? Uh, I know, and I remember being, being a kid and, and, you know, going to church each week. And, and I actually went to a Catholic school growing up and you would hear that word all the time, faith. Right, faith is is one of those words that you hear maybe more often uh, in church than any other. And it's so important to have faith, and we need to keep the faith. What is what does that mean? Well, in in Jairus's case, and I think in in our case, as we were coming, you know, going through this terrible pandemic, it's it's this belief that there's someone out there, right? That there's a spirit, that there is a God in the heavens above us who is looking out for us, a God who we could rely on if we pray to and can help and guide us. And that doesn't mean that there's going to be like some big bumps uh, along the way. You know, we all experience really hard times, but it's so important that during those hard times that we keep our faith and that we always remember that there is a God in, in, in heaven. And there's, you know, if, if you've had, uh, I know from myself, uh, you know, I, 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 we say a prayer every night at dinner for our angels in heaven, people in, in my family, you know, who have, who have passed away and are up in heaven today. And, and, and I call them our angels, you know, looking down on me and, and my wife and my kids and my whole family and guiding us in, in all the decisions we make and protecting us from, from the dangers that come our way. I have faith that those people are up there and they're guiding me every single day. And it's important that you have, you have that as well. Faith isn't just about, you know, going to church with your, with your parents each week and saying, you know, your prayers at church or saying, you know, grace at dinner, you know, that's part of it, right? But faith is much, much bigger than that. Faith and hope in a lot of ways really go together. They're very, very similar. And it was, it was in this story in the gospel, it was Jairus's faith, his, his belief that Jesus, you know, th this, this young, you know, preacher, right, was going to be able to, to help him and to help his family, and that God had sent his son, Jesus, to be that type of person, to help people, and he had that faith, and so it's really important that in your lives, right, that you have faith that Jesus is going to be there to help you, and that you have angels in the heavens above that are looking over you as well. Hope, faith, and then another chance. So in this case, in the, in, in the gospel, it's obvious, right? Jairus's daughter, his 12-year-old daughter had been brought back, you know, from, from, from death by, by Jesus. And now she's been reborn, right? She has another chance. And that's how I, I want you to think about what you're going through in your life now. As terrible as this past, you know, almost year and a half has been and how so many opportunities have been taken from you, right? Some of you never got to experience what it's like to be in a fourth grade classroom or, you know, play on that, that rec basketball team. Like this was the year, you know, you were going to win that, win that rec championship or, or whatever it might be. You, you were supposed to go on this great vacation with your family. And that vacation got canceled and, and you lost out on so many experiences as a young person. 
but know that you have now another chance, not just at those big things, but that you have another chance every single day to make a contribution, to do something positive, to help somebody, to help them in their lives. So that's what I really want to challenge you to think about as you go forward this week. I want you to think about now that you have another chance, now that we're moving past the terrible time of the COVID pandemic and things are opening up and we're going back out and now we're, we're starting summer, right? What are some of the things that you can do, right? That is gonna help others, help somebody in your family. What could you do for yourself, right? That's gonna make your life better. Like these are really important things to think about. So I told you at the beginning that I work in education and I work with fifth and sixth grade students, so middle school students. And <clears throat> on our one of our first days back, I step out into the hallway and students are passing, you know, going from class to class. And it seemed like half of them just walked past me like, like this and pretend I'm holding a cell phone, right? With like kind of their head in their phone and they're kind of walking and they're texting and their friends are walking right next to them and they're not even interacting. They're just, they're on their phones. And I, I remember I pulled a couple of them aside and I said, I've seen you know you guys before all this. I know that you're all really good friends, right? And they, they smiled and, and they shook their heads. I said, talk to each other, have a conversation with each other and don't just bury your head in a screen, right? That's what I want you to think about as you go forward, how you can interact with people in your family, your friends, in the larger community, your school, your church, whatever it might be, and have a positive impact on their lives. Sometimes it's like the smallest little conversation you have with somebody that makes the biggest difference in their day. You could do that by looking them in the eyes and talking with them, you can't do that, I promise you, by burying your head in a device and sending them a, a text, or as my kids say, a snap or whatever that means, uh, right? So that's my challenge for you for this week. I want you to continue to have hope, right? That when things don't go your way, that you know another day is coming and you're gonna get a, another chance and have that faith <clears throat> that there's somebody out there looking out for you, that your prayers are being listened to and that they may not always be answered, right? But that's okay. You keep that hope, you keep that faith, you know, because again, you're always gonna get that other chance. So it was great talking with you today. I hope that you have a, a great week and a great start to your summer. Thanks guys. We will now profess what we believe. Please respond to each question with I believe. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? I believe. Do you believe in Jesus, his only Son, our Lord? I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life? I believe. Do you believe the Catholic Church is our family, the saints are our friends, and Jesus will be with us forever? I believe. This is our faith, and we are proud to profess it. We pray together. The response to our prayers will be, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world that it may encourage all people to come together in peace and unity, to share and to stand up for what is right, and to work together so that all may have what they need in life. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders that they may do all they can to make sure that all people have what they need, especially the medical care and support that they need. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish, our family, and our friends, that we may be moved to care for those who are unwell and support those who are caring for loved ones. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. You may pause the video now to pray the intentions your family holds in their heart. May all our prayers be fulfilled through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with God forever and ever. Amen. United as the body of Christ, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. 
Let's now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Our closing prayer. Jesus, you healed those who asked for your help. May we also be willing to reach out our hands to others in need. Amen. And may God bless us in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the church says, Amen.